The Soldier, Scan Dent Season, Year 1 Mom had always loved letting Ruslana tag along for meetings of the various groupings and conglomerates that ran the yards. Though the military was officially high in the pecking order, Ruslana had known from early on that Mom and Dad were constantly jockeying for influence with a variety of people. What she couldn't tell is if any of them had any clue how to fix things. Dad was kind of distant, but always proud at the speed with which she had shown an aptitude for logistics. It had been their pride when she had been given command for merit, rather than connection. Though that option had always been present, something that made her uneasy when she slept, had used to make her uneasy, when she slept. But Ruslana had grown confident. That she was strong, that she was smart, and that, if things just improved, she might be able to make things better. More efficient. More safe. And that if people were willing to work with her, then the yards wouldn't collapse, and life would become better for everyone. And yet, it didn't. Then they had found out she had been draw for it. The project, and it seemed like mom and dad didn't know what to think. To be proud, angry, fearful of losing their only child. She didn't know, either. But she had believed that when she got here, she could make a difference, protect the people she cared for. And yet, she couldn't. Ruslana took deep breaths, trying to bite back the pain, literally, as her teeth sank into her lip, drawing more blood. She could hear the old man running away like a coward, and flailed her rifle around aimlessly, not even entirely sure she was striking with the axe head which she heard prying loose from its bayonet wrapping and clattering to the floor. Slowly, she adapted, eyes shut. Hold yourself together. You've been through worse. Her field of view was weakened, sure. But that was nothing. The pain was nothing, and if she didn't focus on it, it wasn't truly real. Limping forward and trying to tell herself that when the pain was very real, she made her way to the dais where Kaylee Muir lay against the floor, barely breathing as blood dripped from her open mouth. Even though Ruslana tried to run, she couldn't. She just sort of fell forward, hating herself. Kaylee, Kaylee, Kaylee. She closed her eyes, closed her good eye, trying to look like she wasn't concerned as she was. Looks like he got you pretty good. Lean against my shoulder, all right? I'll walk you out of this place. We'll find that noodle guy, have something nice to eat, and take breather. I'm sorry, Ruslana. I guess I kinda overestimated myself. Curses suck. Kaylee Mira laughed without inhibition, fearless even now. What are you laughing about? Some old fuck isn't going to put you down, Kaylee. You're a hero. You're... Hey. Kaylee Muir managed to hold up her hand, a peaceful smile on her face. It wasn't that guy. A mere hedge wizard couldn't take me down. I've been. Ever since I fought Grendolf, I knew this would happen. I hoped it'd be in the future. Long into the future, you know. But I kept pushing myself, and now look at me. The light began to fade from Kalamir's blade, but not from her eyes. Lana. It was fun, you know. Hanging out and fighting evil. But, you've gotta promise me something, all right. You can't let that hate into your heart. A true hero. A true hero. Kaylee Muir struggled to speak over the tide of blood escaping from her lips, and for the first time a hint of fear crossed into her eyes. Ruslana opened her good eye, thick with tears, and wept. It was then that ear-piercing scream that came from outside and whistled through the nearly vacant tower. They could hear the sound of crunching and myriad voices on the wind, as a wave of anti-color and howling nothingness exploded from the wall where the beleaguered heroes watched. Slowly, the lights began to dance and interweave in a vague pattern of stripes, finally coalescing into a solid form that stood above them with ancient and socketless eyes. The lich, Grendolf, shook his head in disgust. The fool outside who attempted to steal the fruits of my work has been dealt with, though it appears he managed to limp away. That will be fixed after I have dealt with you. I will not allow self-proclaimed heroes to do the same. None shall disturb those who dwell above or below, nor the work of those who suffered so much. For some reason, the Lich himself sounded exhausted, though Ruslana could hardly bring herself to know why. She took a weak defensive position in front of the fallen hero, 
shaking her head and holding her arms to the air in front of her, weapon falling uselessly to the ground. The line's drawn here, Lich. I don't care what you're talking about. Just leave. Now. Grendolf's lipless face was set in a hard frown. Your courage is admirable young woman, but foolish. This battle is between the hero and myself. Let me see her, and I will let you go. I have no quarrel with you, despite your attack on my servants. Ruslana spat, and felt the wind knocked out of her as a blast of harsh wind appeared in the windless tower and swatted into her, causing her to crash to the ground, weeping from the pain. Grendolf took several steps forward, and let out a shattered cry. What is this? I do not comprehend. It was foretold we would battle here, and yet you lie broken from mere wounds and the burden of my curse, that should not be. It was foretold, I foretold it. And yet his anger, or perhaps anguish, turned to burbling and callous laughter as Ruslana tried to yell her protest. Slowly, covered in her own blood, and unable to breath without shuddering, completely unable to speak, Kalimur rose to her feet, and placed her sword in front of her. It no longer glowed with any light at all. Yes. I knew that your soul was too strong to concede to death just yet. Very well then. Let us maim one another until the world grows barren and lifeless, until the suns wither in the sky and the dimensions themselves scream. This ends here, hero. Waves of green color manifested in the air, twisting and turning between several spectrums that Ruslana could see but not describe even as they turned into bizarre facsimiles of serpents and launched themselves through the air towards Kali Muir. The hero didn't even try to block, the lancets tearing into her skin in a mix of their exploding green and the red of her blood. Anyone else would have fallen, but Kali Muir simply walked forward, breathing heavily and eyes clouded. She and Grendolf were so close that the two could stare into each other's eyes. And then Grendolf looked at Ruslana, head turning in place as his skinless lips warped into a smile. Ruslana saw the magic take shape in front of her, this time without color or texture, simply devouring all it touched. She closed her good eye and waited, but death did not come. Grendolf cried out in surprise and rage as Kaylee Muir took the brunt of the blow, which hit her so hard that her feet torn and backwards from the early spears of green magic, tore into the stone as if it were mud. And yet Kaylee Muir did not yield. The hero let out a cry, full of rage and valor that could not be choked back on her own blood. She swung her plain wooden sword forward towards the lich, who caught it in one bony hand. No magic darted from between its blade, but the lich was blown back, crashing against a wall as masonry collapsed upon him. Spitting out a row of teeth that regrew as he did, Grendolf spoke words that lay dangerously upon the current of the air, and where they existed spoke the names of gods that had long since lay dead. The threw themselves at Kali Muir, shrieking in death rattles of hateful magic. Once again she did not dodge, but this time she did not need to. For somehow, unable to even explain herself, Ruslana had managed to pull herself from the floor and throw herself in front of Kali Muir, who looked on terror and surprise then stood by her side and caught her as the magic threatened to eat through Ruslana's flesh. I do not understand. How? Grendolf began, not finishing his sentence as wave after wave of fell magic was summoned into existence. But even as his attacks grew more and more ferocious, the two remained unyielding, and finally, the lich himself began to grow exhausted. It was then that Kali Mira launched herself into the air, farther than any mere human could have but at a distance that was no problem for a true hero. Her sword once again glistened, with no magic save her own, and cracked straight through Grendolf's skull. As she fell, the lich split into two halves, both pulsing with fibrous strands of magic that held them together like veins, and the nightmarish entity nodded, slowly. So. I see. It was my destiny to be defeated here. You are stronger than I thought, hero and knight. Even though I weep at the nightmare you have brought upon us, I admit defeat. Celebrate your victory even as the world turns. The sky will tell, soon enough. We will meet again. And with those words, Grendolf simply was no more, vanishing into the cleft between dimensions where his magic would mend him slowly, once more. Kaylee Muir collapsed, the strength she had drawn giving out, and Ruslana rushed towards her. The hero held out a hand 
placed it tenderly against Ruslana's face to her eye even as her own clearly could not see at all. That's strange, Lana. Usually I can heal people? I guess this is it, hey? No. No, 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 no. But the words didn't come, and Ruslana simply wept a mixture of tears and now hardening blood, and held Kaylee Muir, who fell completely silent at last. Outside, there was no trace of Leopold. The coward had left in a hurry that was surprisingly fast for that of an old man, but tatters of rich cloth and bloodstains many meters away from one another hinted that he too had been confronted by the lich, and lost, badly. Maybe he ended up getting his just desserts, eh, Kaylee? Ruslana said to no one in particular, for the surprisingly light burden in her arms could not respond. It took some time to make a grave, and even more to make a cairn, for Ruslana spent the hours using her detached axe handle to engrave the stones. She had heard that long in the past, people had done as such for those who had fallen who had been heroes, and she had known none more heroic than Kaylee Muir. She would protect everyone. Kaylee Muir was even more light as her body fell into the grave, and Ruslana wondered if it wouldn't have been better to send her body on a ship across the waters, perhaps that it might find her home and the princess, still waiting for her. That's right. Some going, hero. What am I gonna tell Glaudier, hey? Can you imagine what she'll say? She won't believe it, I bet. She'll come here and find a way to fix you up, with some sort of princess magic. She'll sing to you until you wake yourself up and pull yourself together. I'd try, but you know. Tone deaf. This would not be allowed to happen again. Ever again. If you had lived in my world, maybe it wouldn't have been so completely fucked up. I'm just a soldier, Kaylee. I don't. I don't think I understand any of this. Can you? Keep watch over me. I can't follow you just yet. Ruslana closed her eyes, not willing to close the grave just yet. She had removed Kalamir's parka, and done her best to mend the hero's clothes, underneath. It wasn't much, but it was all she could do, once again. But not anymore. It felt wrong to lower the dirt over Kaylee Muir, to actually think of her as being dead, but Ruslana did so. As the cool soil hid her friend from view, Kaylee Muir placed the parka over Kalamir's grave, near the cairn she had set and thrust the wooden sword through it, so that it might flutter in the wind for as long as the thread would last. I thought about making a cape out of your coat. Selfish, I know. Wanted to keep a bit of you with me, I guess. I did though, this eye patch. Stylish, right? Ruslana tried to smile, but could not. She couldn't remember what any of the sex had said about death, but it seemed they all agreed it was something great and glorious, and she could not share that sentiment not now. She placed her hands on the soil in front of her, and tried to imagine Calamir's there as well. This is it then. I'll see you again, someday. Don't get into too many fights without me, hero. It'd break my heart, if you did. And the dirt said nothing in response, but as Ruslana opened her eyes, she felt purpose surging into her again. Though only one could see, that was nothing. The sky above her was blue, the suns were high, and she had the will of a hero to carry out, at any cost. Until then. Her form was good as she saluted. Her parents would be proud. Even if it would have meant nothing to Kaylee Muir, she held it until the suns had fallen lower in the sky, slung her duffel over her back, and turned to the monument as a breeze caught Kaylee Muir's parka and carried it against the wind. She would bring law. Ruslana set off for where, she could not say. It did not matter, for she felt she knew what she had to do. She smiled, and it was a smile that was full of confidence even as the season began to change, the ripening plants of the scandent season already giving way to the placid calm of the sunlit season she had felt when first arriving. And then the sky broke. Chapter End